Hola y bienvenidos a la Daily Hustle. Soy Enrique Byrnes y presidente de esa mejor cerveza. No abate por No Filter Network. Will the Thrill Clark not here this morning? Miguelito Sandy Guito not with us this morning, but dead or alive, we properly salute our boys as well as each and every single one of you. Yes, 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 yes. Woo. Remember this, folks. When we are juiceful, we are useful. And when we are juiceless, we are fucking useless. A very pleasant good morning to you on the third day of April 2023. We are brought to you by that, that, that. Bet online, the number one online betting destination. We have the final four coming up as well as MLB action in full swing. Go to bet online for all of your latest odds, news, scores, predictions, whatever else you could possibly imagine. Bet online. Go ahead and put in the promo code BLEAV, capital B L E A V, for 50% off your welcome bonus. Bet online. The game starts here. We are also brought to you by Verge. Try Verge and our guy Jory over at Verge will take care of you. Damn, man. I still can't believe how big these glasses are. I bought another pair. I love them so much. I'm not kidding. Next step is a face shield. All right. So this is a mixture of lemon, honey, ginger, cannabis. It is greatness rolled into one. And it is very soothing on the throat. So salute to each and every one of you. Mm. <sighs> so good. Go to tryverge.com. Type in the promo code LTP10. I'm pretty sure that works. If it doesn't, hit me up and let me know. Today's daily hustle electronic email communication that went out earlier this morning. If you haven't signed up for the daily hustle email, I sent a link out yesterday on my Instagram story time. Click the link. I still believe that it's up there, or I believe it is still up there. And you'll get these emails, the blog, sent to you five days a week. You don't have to read all of them. Uh, You want to go ahead and open over the weekend. It doesn't matter. My open rate's not bad. It's just like 40-something percent. I think that's good. Someone told me if it was like 20% or higher, it's that's pretty damn good. I'm sitting in a 40% range. So I think that's something we're proud of. And even if, and I, here's the other thing. I, look, I get it. We all live busy fucking lives, right? So I can't expect each and every one of you to drop everything just to engage with daily hustle, but know that we're here for you. So if you want to sign up for that, go to my IG story time, click on it. Boom. It'll pop up, hit the link. That's the only way. I don't I don't know what else to tell you guys. I it's I wish it was easier. We used to have it on a website where it says put your email address in. For whatever reason, it's not on the website anymore like that. So periodically I will throw out these random, hey, sign up for the Daily Hustle blog here. And that's a time where you can take advantage of it. Okay, here we go. The Daily Hustle email. For today, again, that went out earlier this a.m. If I can find it. Patience, patience, and yes, here it is, a yes legacy. Buenos dias, today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2023. Daily Hustle quote of the day. If you're going to live, leave a legacy. Make a mark on the world that can't be erased. Maya Angelou. Larry Lucchino, the former Princeton basketball player, distinguished lawyer, and the president of three thriving MLB franchises in Baltimore, 
San Diego and Boston has passed away at the age of 78 because we ima- because we imagine the non diehard baseball fan is relatively unfamiliar with Larry. We figured this would be an awesome opportunity to regale the Daily Hustle No Filter Network audience about the legacy he left behind that certainly cannot be erased. Lucchino helped orchestrate the construction of Camden Yards, Petco Park, and then helped preserve Fenway by modernizing the classic ballpark for the 21st century. Even more importantly, it was Larry's constant ability to hire the right individuals, and then he had an uncanny ability to put them in a position to succeed by making the necessary tools and resources available. Lucchino was a true visionary who would proactively seek front office personnel and certain players he believed would not only build winning teams, but he was fixated on finding the right people that would construct a championship culture. Amongst his countless hires, Larry took under his wing and mentored is Theo Epstein, universally recognized as the greatest GM of all time, supported by his improbable, curse-breaking World Series runs in both Boston and Chicago. Mike Barnacle, a former Boston Globe columnist and one of Lucchino's best friends, described his legacy as, quote, more than anything else, it was Larry's vision that finally put the Red Sox into the yes business. Yes, we can win the World Series again. Yes, we can put together a winning team, not just on the field, but in the front office as well. Greatest yes man we have ever had in Boston in all the best ways. Rest easy, Larry. Your yes legacy is alive and well. P.S. Click link below to pick up a copy of the brand new Let Them Play Parenting and Coaching Guide to Use Sportsbook. I don't have one up here right now. But go to ericburns.com to pick one of those up. Okay. Let's hit a few of the top stories from uh, yesterday, from today. Look, I'm going to go right to the source in The Athletic. Ken Rosenthal is one of the most well-respected writers that I've ever come across. He's one of the most truthful guys. He doesn't bullshit. He is somebody that... For the most part, now, we don't always agree. Uh, we, we've disagreed on several fronts, on several different things through the course of our time at MLB Network together. But I respect him as much as anybody I've come across in the media world. And he had an article yesterday. He actually went over several different things here. But the title of the article is Debunking an A's Related Conspiracy. So... If you guys saw what happened yesterday, I'll just go right down to it. Because he's he's really kind of adamant about this. If you did not hear, Asturi Ruiz was sent down to the minor leagues. Brent Rooker, who was the A's lone all-star last year, was benched for two games. So there have been all sorts of conspiracy theories about why this has happened. Rosenthal writes, it was 39 years ago when Sports Illustrated duped the baseball world with the legend of Sid Finch, the world, excuse me, the would-be monk with a French horn in a 168-mile-per-hour fastball. It remains the greatest baseball-themed April's Fool's joke of all time, but we may have a new second-place finisher. Last Dive Bar is an apparel company in Oakland that has lately learned hard can I swear to you I can read let's try this again last dive bar in Oakland is an apparel company in Oakland that has lately leaned hard into the sell the team merchandise protesting over John Fisher's plan to move the team to Las Vegas on Monday they tweeted a mysterious bit of conspiracy bait where Brent Rooker who has sat out two games this season and Asturi Ruiz who was sent down to AAA being punished by the organization for wearing LDB, that's Last Dive Bar, wristbands. They tweeted it on April 1st, folks, and in subsequent tweets, gleefully reveling in the success of the prank, 
They posted tongue-in-cheek follow-ups, photoshopped evidence of the wristbands on such figures as John F. Kennedy, Bigfoot, Jimmy Hoffa, and Jesus. But by yesterday, it really took off. Mediate, Nesson, Barstool, SF Gate. Even the home of Sid Finch Sports Illustrated all posted stories that seem to imply that it might be real. A few notes here. Ruiz, yes, was hitting 429 after three games, a very small sample size, but certainly not the sort of stat you usually see when a guy is sent down. But A's GM, David Force, spoke openly about the demotion. And if you look deeper, his comments make baseball sense. Take a look at Ruiz's baseball savant page. So they have all these numbers here. It's the X Woba, the X batting average, the X slugging, all this does average exit velocity, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, sweet spot percentage, chase percentage, whiff percentage, K percentage. Walk percentage, all of it, right? And it's not great, but Asturi Ruiz is not a slugger. That's not why you had him in the big leagues. You had him out there for his speed. So if he could increase his on-base percentage and decrease his strikeout percentage, you're going to get a very serviceable player. Well, they talked to him about this in spring training. He made some adjustments. He started off the season hot, yet for whatever reason, he's sent down. I'll continue. Rooker has started four of the team's six games, including the last two Monday afternoon when the theory was floated. So he hasn't, quote, been benched. Other punished players mentioned the theory. Tony Kemp, minus one baseball war in 2023, now with the Orioles. Christian Pache, Minus 5 B war all the way back to 2022 before he's traded Philadelphia. James Caprillion, minus 0.3 war in 2023, now a free agent. So why did so many people fall for it? My theory. Going through all tweets, it appears that the last dies bar's previously close relationship with the organization has soured in the last year plus. Fans are mad, understandably. The sentiment in Oakland has pivoted from an enthusiastic go A's to an ingredient of sell the team. And it seems like every day brings a new face, palm worthy controversy. Meanwhile, I guess it's this. Meanwhile, Fisher has completely obliterated any benefit of the doubt. While this particular scandal appears to be nothing more than a clever prank, people do tend to believe the worst about people they don't like. And is there anyone in Oakland who is more disliked than Fisher? Uh, no. There's just not. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get this straight here. Esturi Ruiz was sent down to the minor leagues because the A's claimed Tyler Nevin. The A's apparently were not going to keep Ruiz on the opening day roster. But because of an injury, something opened up and they kept him. Understand that this is a guy that had 63 stolen bases last year. His defensive metrics weren't great, but there certainly are positive things to work with. He had a minus 0.1 war, something like that. Okay, I get that. But I also understand that right now, the Oakland A's are one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball, if not the worst team. So when you're telling me that you have a player that is a minus 0.1 war, as a matter of fact, wait, hold on a second. That's not that bad because right now you got one fucking win. And so to think that the replacement player comes up and is going to replace Ruiz and be better than Ruiz, that's just not realistic either. So... Whether that is Nevin, whether that is somebody else, look, I don't know. But I do know that as a young player, you do need time. Typically, a young guy will come up, they'll have instant success, then the league figures them out, and there's this cat-and-mouse game that goes on for the rest of their career. (sighs) 
I love Ken. I think he makes some good points here. I even like David Forrest. I think that David Forrest logically could very easily be making baseball moves. But I also don't think that the last dive bar was fucking around with their tweets. I do think they are convinced that there is some sort of conspiracy theory here. I'm not sure if there is or if there isn't. But when you have that many reputable publications coming out and putting a story out like this, I do believe that there is something to it. Is this Sid Finch? No fucking way. No chance. That was an April Fool's joke. This is not an April Fool's joke. This is a conspiracy theory, and I don't think there's any evidence or proof of it. I do believe that the Players Association will, at the very least, look into it to see if there is something there. Now, when it comes to John Fisher, I don't know him. I don't know his intentions. I do know, obviously, that he hasn't put a whole lot into the team. And I do know that he wants to get the fuck out of town. It's somewhat understandable at this point. I'm not sure if John Fisher is engaged enough with the day-to-day activities of the Oakland A's and what's going on for him to instruct David Forrest to send Asturi Ruiz down and to bench Brent Rooker. It just doesn't make sense. If he is... I actually will give him some credit for giving a fuck because right now with everything else going on in Oakland, I just don't think he cares. So if that is the case and he actually did instruct David Forrest to send Ruiz down and Ben Rooker, okay. Hey, at least he's starting to care a little bit. I do think that Rosenthal is right. They wanted to put Ruiz down in the minor leagues, have him lead off, get a shit ton of at-bats, figure out how to get the fuck on base, figure out how to barrel some balls, figure out how to not strike out, and then come back up, and we think you could be a two- to three-win player. Is that possible? Yeah, I do. So on that note, I actually... I'm in agreement with Rosenthal, but it, I, I, am in, I disagree with him to the point where this wasn't an April's Fool's joke. It wasn't at all. This was if it looks like a rat and it smells like a rat and it crawls around like a fucking rat, it's probably a rat. I'm just not convinced that it's a rat because, yeah, there definitely are some things. And the reason why, yeah, it obviously was not performance-based, and that's what you would have to tell Ruiz, you say, hey, look, they had a chance to claim Tyler Nevin. And when they claimed him, Ruiz was going to be the odd man out. Okay, moving on. Uh, Yesterday, I don't know if you guys watched the game. Uh, We got a lot of San Francisco Giants fans that follow No Filter Network. Thrill and I were on last night, and we watched the – Dodgers and the Giants live alternative broadcast. The one glaring thing that I noticed, at least last night, was the amount of strikes that Giants hitters took in the zone. Whether they were getting me over curveballs, hanging cutters, fastballs down the middle, I saw multiple. Giants hitters not being aggressive within the zone. If you want to be successful at the major league level as a hitter, you've got to swing at strikes. And you need to realize that typically in a at-bat, you're going to get one to one and a half pitches on average to really pound. Well, when you get up there and you're in a situation where you have runners at first and third base, 
and less than two outs, you think you're going to get a fastball down the middle, you're out of your fucking mind. What they're trying to do is keep you off balance, hopefully get you to roll over, whatever it is. But to honey hole them like this and to not expand the zone a little bit, your only job in that situation is to get the runner home. I tell the boys all the time, the let them play kids, that is, something you can handle. And basically what that means is look fastball, but if he hangs you something up in the zone, go get it. Drive the baseball. That needs to be the approach. And last night, I I just didn't see it. It was really, really hard to watch. (laughs) I mean, look, there were several instances, and it happened with, I mean, not, again, not just one. I saw Jung Hu Lee take a fastball down the middle. I saw Chapman probably uh, not swing at some pitches that he should have. The big one, Conforto too, when runners were on base. But this comes back to Patrick Bailey. And I don't want to pick on the rookie, but. He was up there with a runner on third base in less than two outs. And he had at least two different pitches in which he could have handled. Now, does it mean he's going to hit a home run on these pitches? No, not necessarily. But he 1,000% could have hit a fly ball to the outfield to score that runner. And then leading off the final inning, down one run, you are the table setter. So it's going to be Bailey, Nick Ahmed, and then right back up to the top. It is so vitally important to get on base. He works the count to 3-2 and ends up taking a dick ball right down the middle. I mean, this thing cannot have split the fucking plate any better. That's a mental thing, folks. Patrick Bailey can hit. I know he can hit. I really like him as a player. I love him behind the plate. But if he wants to be taking those big time at bats late in the game in that situation, we got to swing the fucking bat. You have to give yourself an opportunity to succeed. You will never hit what you don't swing at. So as much as we try to hammer home the be patient, have discipline approach, which is good. And we say, hey, make sure we only swing at strikes. Absolutely lay off balls out of the zone. Yes. One of the best hitters in baseball, arguably right now, if not the best, literally can make an argument. It's Corey Seager. And if you look at Seager's numbers, this dude swings at more strikes than anybody else in the game of baseball. And it's not even close. They have a statistic now, which is called the Seager, because he is so good at swinging at strikes. So it's not only about laying off pitches outside of the zone. It's about swinging at strikes in the fucking zone. So that is, look, this could go to the Giants hitters. This could go to our let them play Hitters on our 12U team. This goes to anybody who's playing the game of baseball. Be aggressive within the zone. Juan Soto, for example, this is a guy that's made a living on getting on base and taking balls. He takes all the borderline ones. But at some point, and I think one of the reasons why he's having success in the early going here is that It seems like he's made a commitment to swing at more balls within the zone. You always have to have a swing first mentality where it's yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 no. That's it. It's never no, 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 oh, yes. Uh Uh-uh. That's not how this game works. This is a yes and then 
Make your eyes stop. But, again, more than anything, this is an approach that the Giants are going to have to clean up. They had a great opportunity to win that game last night. Now they're up against it. And Logan Webb, yeah, he got hit around. I get it. Whatever. It's going to happen. The Dodgers are the fucking Dodgers. Bullpen did a terrific job limiting them to five runs. They've now scored five runs in every one of the games they played this year still. So it's going to be the Giants and the Dodgers back at it tonight. Uh, scores from yesterday, Milwaukee 3-2 over the Twins. They remain undefeated. Baltimore goes down to Kansas City 4-1. They're 3-2. Kansas City 2-3. and three. Philly, Bryce Harper, three home runs yesterday. 9-4 winners over Cincinnati. He obviously looks primed and ready to have a gigantic year. Angels win again. They're now 3-2. and two. Think about how they started. The two horrific losses to Baltimore in Baltimore held a team meeting, and they now won three consecutive games, beating the Orioles and then the Marlins twice in a row. Speaking of the Marlins, they're 0-6. Dog shit. No bueno. All right. Tampa, 5-2 winners over Texas. Tampa's 3-3, three and three, Rangers 3-2. Three and two. Cubs, big winners over Colorado. Colorado's really scuffling. They might give Oakland a run for being the worst team in baseball. White Sox, congratulations. They beat the Braves 3-2, big win for them, first win of the year. Toronto, 2-1 over Houston. Houston, a uh, little bit of a hangover after the no-hitter. They go down to the Blue Jays. Oakland, 5-4 losers to Boston. Last night, Oakland's one and five. Boston now four and two. Cleveland five two over the M's. San Diego goes down to St. Louis for the second night in a row. St. Louis is back to five hundred. San Diego at three and five. The Arizona Diamondbacks beat the piss out of the Yankees seven nothing. Zach Gallon was terrific for the D backs seven nothing. Then the Giants go down to the Dodgers five four. Today's action. It'll be the Giants and Dodgers once again at 7.10 p.m. It's going to be Kyle Harrison against Tyler Glass. So Harrison had success against the Dodgers last season. Let's see if he can repeat it. They're going to have a tough task going up against Glass now here. Uh, so <laughs> recommendation once again to Giants hitters. Swing at strikes. Toronto against uh, Houston. You got Colorado, Chicago, you Detroit. Hold on a second. All of a sudden, they just mess with me. I guess they've got some games starting right now. Texas at Tampa. The Angels at Miami. The Twins at Milwaukee. Kansas City at Baltimore. Atlanta at Chicago. Boston at Oakland. That's a 12-37 start. Then you got the New York Yankees at Arizona. 12-40 start. Bunch of day games today. Cincinnati at Philly. You have Cleveland. At Seattle, all day games. St. Louis at San Diego. Pittsburgh at Washington. Colorado at Chicago. Toronto at Houston. And again, you have the San Francisco Giants at the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight. Detroit and the Mets. So 4-0 Detroit and the New York Mets has been postponed. That just happened. So we'll see. All right. Uh, back at you tomorrow with the... Daily Hustle, I'm going to play some pickleball. Everyone have a fantastic day, and uh, check out the new pickleball court that I put in my living room. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Tara's going to love it. Uh, always good making the wife happy when you move the furniture around and put pickleball court <clears throat> in the middle of it. Uh, as far as everyone, hold on a second, man. Jason, what's up, dude? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, John Emmanuel Ramos Henderson in Makati City. We are international once again, motherfuckers. Uh, by the way, we record this live on No Filter Network, eh, usually between 8 and 10 p.m., and then we get uploaded 17 different podcast platforms, including Caffeine, TV, Fubo, everything else. So if you want to come join us live, please do. We got the chat firing and all sorts of other goodies on no filter network rocket reese what's up dude casey baltimore in a delay as well thank you for that up-to-date information we got bob in birmingham you got frank down there in pensacola florida 
and uh, the rest of the crew. All right. Appreciate you guys joining. If you're listening to Apple, Spotify, want to leave a five-star review, we'd greatly appreciate it if you're feeling generous. If you got the time, go ahead and uh, write a little review. It helps too. Everyone have a great day. See you tomorrow. See ya!